Have you ever wondered what might be the advice of an expert mathematician on how to learn maths? In this video, we will look into how top mathematicians approach learning mathematics. We will see practical advice on how to better understand and remember definitions, theorems and proofs. As you will see, it's all about being extremely active in your learning. When learning a new definition, the first thing famous mathematician Paul Halmers would tell you to do is to find examples, and preferably your own. In his autobiography, I Want to Be a Mathematician, he says, In one word, I'd say examples. Every time I learn a new concept, I look for examples, and of course, non-examples. In fact, he's so adamant about this, that in one of his two chapters on learning, there's a whole section called For Example. Field medalist Terence Tao, and one of the greatest mathematicians of our time, also seems to put a strong emphasis on examples. In his book, Analysis 1, the word example appears on average once every page. For comparison, in other highly regarded textbooks, this word appears once every two pages. But most importantly, each of his examples tends to highlight a different aspect or peculiarity of the definition. In a sense, he takes care to find diverse examples that help explore different aspects of the definition. Oftentimes, the simplest examples can already be very instructive. For instance, with these simple examples for a Cauchy sequence and a non-Cauchy sequence, you can already see that being a bounded sequence is not sufficient for being Cauchy. I recommend keeping a running list of examples so that whenever you encounter a new definition or theorem, you can try to see if and how it applies to them. Another thing you can do is to make the definition your own. For example, if you find the definition confusing or lacking, one thing you could do is to try to improve it. It could be a slight change of symbols, rephrasing or breaking it up into parts. Even just thinking about how to make it clearer could help you understand and remember it. Terence Tao, for example, decided that instead of directly introducing the definitions of limits and Cauchy sequences as usual, it would be better to define them through another concept, which he named epsilon closeness. Another way of making it your own is to describe the concept intuitively, in your own words, something that Terence Tao does a lot. You can even just write next to the definition a quick and intuitive description. It's not meant to be exact. That's what the definition is for. It's meant to give you a quick and intuitive sense of what the definition actually means. Don't underestimate the importance of developing intuition. This is exactly what's going to help you become a better problem solver. What about understanding and remembering a new theorem? Every mathematician would probably agree that one of the best ways to better understand and remember a theorem is by asking questions and answering them. Tau, Polya, Halmos and Moore have all emphasised the importance of this throughout their careers. So, for example, you could ask what happens if you remove a certain condition? Answering this would probably require you to locate where the condition appears in the proof and to understand how it fits in. This will help you to remember both the theorem statement itself, as well as its proof. Another question you could ask is what happens if you plug in extreme or trivial cases, like the constant function or the identity element, and so on. Besides providing you with quick intuition on what the theorem means, this can also highlight important peculiarities. And of course, here too, your earlier examples can come in very handy. So, for instance, if the theorem states that every Cauchy sequence is bounded, then you can quickly answer whether the converse statement is true by simply observing the examples we constructed earlier. Asking such questions and answering them will not only improve your understanding of the theorem, but it will also make it more memorable. Another item I believe all expert mathematicians would agree on is to not passively read through the proof. To truly remember it and to gain a better understanding of when and how to use the techniques that are in it, it is far more effective to work through the proof. My favourite comment about this is by Fields medalist Timothy Gowers, who wrote, Attempt to prove the theorem yourself. If you've tried sufficiently hard at that and got stuck, then have a quick look at the proof, 
just enough to find out what the point is that you're missing. That should give you an aha feeling that will make the step far easier to remember in the future than if you had just passively read it. When you do look, I recommend that you take note of the key transitions that you missed and analyse why you missed them and how you could have thought of them yourself. Eventually, you'll find that those items are either no longer an issue for you or that they employ a particularly clever idea that is hard to come up with on your own. Either way, you will only be left with remembering a few key ideas, very similar to how you might remember a piece of text in a way that would enable you to reconstruct it later in your own words. Even if you were able to prove the theorem, Turns Tau suggests that it may be useful to try a different method as well. If it fails or proves to be less elegant than the first one, then you've gained a better understanding of when to use and when not to use each of the methods. If you do find yourself reading through part of a proof or a solution, make sure to get your pen out and ask why a lot. In Terence Tao's book, some pages even have this word appearing five times. He clearly wants you to verify that you're actively reading through the text. If you try doing this, you'll be surprised at how often a seemingly trivial claim that you're reading is not so trivial when you actually stop to think about it. And here is some evidence that Tao himself clearly asks why a lot. You can tell that he's trying to make sense of the proof that he's reading here by working through it actively and filling in details that are not clear to him. And you can also tell that it was not too easy either. I'll leave you with a final famous quote from Paul Halmers to demonstrate just how active he thinks you should be when learning mathematics. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more information on the techniques used by expert mathematicians, I've linked to all the resources and more in the description. And if you did enjoy this video and would like to see more like this, please consider subscribing.